Hello and welcome to the Your County Government Show. I'm Deb Gruber, your host, and today I'm joined by Brian Middendorf, our county attorney. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Brian, your background and your role here at Morrison County. Well, first, I just want to say uh, it's about time you had me on the show. I've been <laughs> asking for a really long time. I don't think that's fair, Brian. <laughs> we meant to schedule you. It just hasn't worked out. So okay. I'm glad now it does. All right. Well, my background and experience. As you know, I grew up in Stearns County. As did I. Yes, uh, right down the road from Cold Spring uh, uh, in Freeport. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. And uh, I went to uh, college at St. John's University and law school at the University of Minnesota. And then after that, uh, I uh, went down to Southern Minnesota and worked as a judge's clerk for a year, and then I moved here to Morrison County when I got a job uh, working at the county attorney's office as an assistant county attorney. So I didn't grow up in Morrison County, but I moved here as quickly as I could. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer. I think I'll use that one from now on, too. And then you, you started what year at the county attorney's office in Morrison County? I think it was 1998. So you've been with Morrison County I've, a long I've time. been here for 17 and a half years. Wow. So yes, I started as an assistant in the office, and then I was elected county attorney eight and a half years ago. and. Uh, uh, I've been here ever since. Well, great. Well, welcome again. Let's talk a little bit about the county attorney and the roles that the county attorney plays within the organization. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the, the county attorney is an elected official, of course, and uh, the, the county attorney uh, does a variety of things. Uh, what we're most known for, I suppose, is being the, the chief prosecutor for the jurisdiction that we're in. and. Uh, but but our, our job encompasses so much more than that. We, we represent all facets of county government. Uh, I, we do a lot of uh, civil work. We represent social services, planning and zoning, your office, uh, the county commissioners. And so we touch a little bit of everything within county government. Yeah, you do. You see a lot of it. That's what I like about the job I do, and I imagine it's nice for you also to have that variety. Uh, that's what I enjoy about the job. It's certainly one of the things I like doing because I never know what I'm going to do uh, through the course of a day, what kind of phone call I'll get, mm -hmm. and what I'll be working on. Thanks. But uh, if, if, if I could break it down a little bit further, uh, we, we prosecute uh, all the crimes that occur in Morrison County from the most serious felonies down to petty misdemeanor traffic offenses. And we do uh, both uh, adult prosecution and juvenile prosecution. And uh, uh, that, that is the bulk of what we do, but it's uh, by no means all we do. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, uh, social services work, in particular child protection work. So go into that a little bit, Brian, if you would. That means that the county, when acting in their role as that child protection official, you're part of that team that would make sure that um, oh, the child's best interests are represented. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the children are our most important resource. They're our most precious resource. And our job is to protect them from uh, abuse and neglect. And uh, we work hand in hand with social services to accomplish that by representing them in the courtroom when, uh, when children are in danger. And uh, we have, uh, that's a lot of work for our office. It's a big job and we take it very seriously. And so that's the work we do with child protection and social services. Sure. And you talked a little bit about there's, um, the county offices, you work with a lot of the county offices, mine included, like you said, right. you know, we'll have either employment issues at times you get involved in, there's a lot of planning and zoning duties that you have and you, and I both sit with the county board for the board meetings and all of those various issues that come up throughout the county. That's exactly right. Uh, we deal a lot with the planning and zoning office, uh, land use issues come up all the time, as you know, and so I'm, I'm working with that office. Um, data practices is always a big issue nowadays. Uh, uh, that affects every office in the county, and uh, open meeting law, and uh, the list goes on and on. Contracts, I look to you a lot to 
read all that fine print and make sure right. we're. I, I do we're a, doing a lot of civil work myself in the mm -hmm. office, and contracts does uh, take a lot of time. You have to read those thoroughly, and uh, that's what we try to do is give sound advice. Yes, exactly. How many staff do you have? Uh, I have uh, four assistants in the office and uh, three uh, support staff to help us out. And so we have a small office uh, and we get a lot of work done. You do. And now do the various attorneys have various um, specialties? Is that the right word? I think so, yes. I, I assign each attorney in my office a specific caseload and uh, it, it gives them an opportunity to really focus on an area of the law and get to know it really well and develop a expertise or a specialty. Uh, but we also have to do a little bit of cross training because we have a small office and so we all have to know what each other is doing as well. But uh, to the best we can, we, we try to assign spe specific case types to specific attorneys in the office. Sure, that makes sense. Now you do a lot. We talked about the various duties you do. Are there anything, any areas of law that you don't? handle or anything that you need to go elsewhere? I, I think that's one of the most misunderstood areas of, of what the county attorney does. We do get lots of phone calls throughout the course of a week from citizens who look to us for help on various private legal issues. Um, we, get, we get phone calls from people who have a, a contract dispute, uh, land use disputes with their their neighbors, uh, child custody issues, visitation issues, um, things of that nature. And they call us for help and we would like to help them if we could, but the fact of the matter is we're, we're a full-time county attorney's office. We only represent the county and the county's interests and so we're not allowed to represent private citizens with their private legal disputes and so we have to try to help them by pointing them elsewhere we, can, we can't help them ourselves and so that's tough but that's uh, part of our job is to try to uh, let them know that they need to find other avenues for assistance and so I, I, that's <laughs> that's difficult sometimes. People don't really understand that. Exactly what your role is exactly and what it needs to be based upon statutory limitations and direction and things. Um, so you talk about prosecuting criminals and you're the, the prosecutor for the county for, for that. Um, so that means you work closely with the sheriff's office, closely with the court system, probation, things of that nature. Um, you know, what, what types of trends do you see? What are you seeing in the county as far as crime goes um, from your perspective? Well, illegal drugs is always an issue, of course. It, uh, it's always something on the top of our mind. One of, the, one of the trends that we're really looking at nowadays is prescription drug abuse. And what we've learned is that just here in Morrison County, our local pharmacies dispense thousands upon thousands of uh, prescription drugs just in a single day. And so tens of thousands are prescribed throughout a month. And, and, and uh, people aren't too concerned about that in, in many cases because, well, this is all legal. Uh, it's done by, through a prescription from a, a doctor to a pharmacy. And it's used in most cases by people who really need those prescriptions to help them. But what we're learning is that a very, even though it's a small percentage, uh, but it is a percentage of, the, of those prescription drugs get diverted illegally to people who don't need them, don't use them properly. And even though it's a small percentage, a small percentage of a lot is still a lot and it's a major concern for us that we've really been taking a hard look at lately. And so what, uh, what we're doing in Morrison County is the county law enforcement uh, doctors, pharmacists, we're, we're getting together to really address this issue and to see how we can impact it to make sure that the people who need these prescription drugs are getting them and that the people who aren't supposed to have them are not getting them. And so that's not an easy thing to do, but that's what we're really trying to focus on. And it's good that that group of people that really have different disciplines and see this issue from a different angle are working together to try to address the issue as a whole. Because um, one component of that can't cause or can't solve the problem. Absolutely not. We have to come together as a team to solve this problem. And that's what we're doing now. And I think 
we're making a difference. Good. Good. I was just speaking to the, the employee that we have that's working with some grant funding over at the hospital and in, in the clinics about in that same regard, and I think was maybe an idea developed through that group that they brainstormed and, and wanted to have someone over there that really kind of deals specifically with the the issue and the patients as a whole and looks at their entire situation. And so I think there's a lot of very positive step and I'm glad steps happening to help with that problem and I'm glad you're part of that because you need to be, you see the tail end of the issue in terms of when folks are in trouble. Yeah, it's, it's really a matter of communication with the, with the other players in the system and I'm, I'm glad that we're finally really taking a hard looking at, look at this problem and we're finally starting to address it. Good. Um, what other programs? Are there anything, any new programs that you're dealing with in your office? Yes, drug court. <laughs> yes, that's been going on for not quite a year, has it? Just over a year. Just over, Just okay. over a year. So it's not new, new, new. but uh, it's it's still fairly new to Morrison County. Well, and since you haven't been on the program before to talk <laughs> right. about it, why don't we do that now? <laughs> Great. Uh, it's something that I really want to get out and talk about in the community, so this is a perfect opportunity to discuss that. Um, drug court, uh, it, it's, uh, it's not a new concept nationwide. It's, it's something that actually started back in the late 1980s, back in, uh, or, yes, 1980s in, in the state of Florida, Miami, uh, during the height of the crack cocaine epidemic. Uh, they were having uh, obviously terrible problems down in Florida and they decided to uh, get together and try to come up with a different way to solve the drug problem in, in that state. And what they came up with was drug court. And uh, obviously it's really taken off since then in, in, the, in the intervening 25 years. It's really rolled out uh, across the country and now it's in all 50 states and I believe there's over 2,500 specialty courts throughout the United States and just in Minnesota there is now approximately 50 drug courts and of course we're one of the, the newer ones in the state. Wow, well, what is different about drug court? What we'd call maybe the regular court? <laughs> traditional not, court. Traditional court, okay. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's, it's, it's a unique type of court where uh, it's many of the same uh, principal players, the judge, prosecutor, defense attorney, probation officer, but we work together in an entirely different way to try to accomplish a, a specific goal of, uh, of reducing the drug problem. And so how it's set up is uh, we come together as a team to uh, discuss each individual that's in drug court and uh, address their specific needs and problems. So maybe a little more time with that actual defendant about their situation, not just you committed this crime, we arrested you, we are prosecuting you, you're found guilty, you're put in jail, maybe there's more work it, that's done with them or there's more um, uh, close relationship that's developed so you understand what's going on or they're able to look at their life a little bit more completely, it sounds like? We, we, it's definitely a far more intensive program. I, 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 it's, they, these uh, folks that are in drug court are, are monitored and watched on a regular basis, daily basis. Uh, they're required to uh, abstain and they're tested on a uh, random and regular basis. They're required to come to court, at least initially, on a, on a weekly basis and, and tell the judge what they've been doing, what they've been up to, uh, explain their progress. And uh, it's that type of intensive uh, supervision that is really different from traditional courts. So the traditional court, by the time that you, from the time you're maybe arrested and initially charged to when you appear in court can be quite a long time period, can't it? It is. It's, it's a very long process in traditional court and I don't think most people realize that and it can be very frustrating, especially to, to crime victims, understanding why it takes months and months and months for a case to get through the system and I understand that frustration. It's frustrating for us too, whereas uh, it's different with drug court. It's, 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 uh, it's regular court, it's intensive supervision, very close monitoring, 
Uh, uh, the people in drug court are required to go into treatment, they're required to go into aftercare, and following that they're required to uh, go out into the community and, and get jobs or an education or further treatment. Uh, they, they're required to engage in pro-social activities and so it, it's, it's a very different model than a traditional court, although in the same setting with the same people. So if this is proven to work well, how come everyone's not in it? What do you need to have in order to be eligible to participate in the program? Uh, drug court isn't for everyone. Uh, we have very strict guidelines for who can get in. And uh, in Morrison County, uh, it has to be an adult offender. We don't accept juveniles into the program. They have to be a Morrison County resident because they need to live here so we can monitor and watch them on a regular basis. If someone's from Minneapolis or Duluth, we can't send someone out to monitor where they're living and what they're doing on a daily basis. So they have to live within the county. And uh, beyond that, uh, they have to have a, a chemical dependency problem, which I, I suppose is obvious, uh, but that is determined by uh, social services, whether or not they, they meet their actual requirements of being chemically dependent. And then beyond that, they have to be uh, considered a high risk to reoffend and be determined to have a high need for services as determined by uh, community corrections and one of their objective uh, testing methods. Okay. So those are the people that we're looking for in drug court. Those are the people that are accepted. Now there's also uh, individuals that we can't accept into drug court. Uh, we don't accept the violent offenders. Uh, it's a safety risk for, for the people involved in the system that are trying to monitor these, these people. We don't accept uh, sexual offenders for many of the same reasons. Uh, we don't accept uh, high-level drug dealers or manufacturers. Uh, drug court is simply not appropriate for those type of people. As I said, drug court is not appropriate for everyone. For some people, um, uh, drugs, uh, for that type of drug uh, dealing uh, or high-level dealers, uh, jail or prison is, is more appropriate. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when you're in drug, drug court, you aren't incarcerated. You're, you know, living a life, and and those that are you're within the community. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're, you're living within the community, mm -hmm. and that's the way it's set up. And we can't have people in a jail or prison within drug court because that's uh, the opposite of what we're trying to do. Exactly. Um, well, that's good. It's nice to hear that there's participation and that it's going well. And a very positive outcome because the idea is to help these people um, move to healthy choices that produce healthy citizens and, and whatnot. That's so, certainly one of the goals. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad that it's working out. What else is there? Why do you, why do you like being the county attorney, Brian? <laughs> Other than you get to work with the county administrator and come on shows like this. Right. Great, mm -hmm. great, yep. uh, great mm -hmm. people to work with. Yes. But uh, that, that is actually one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. I, I like uh, working with, uh, with, the, with my staff. Uh, we all get along very well. It, it's almost like a family. We're, we're a great team, and that's one of the things I enjoy. One of the other things I enjoy about being county attorney is, is just I, I feel like I'm making a, a big difference in the community. I, I, I think I'm... I'm, I'm making this a better place to live. Uh, I'm contributing to this being a healthier, safer community. I feel like it's very important work and, and that makes me feel good. And uh, that's what I really enjoy about it. And that's good. It sounds like you're doing an excellent job. Well, maybe I know that too, so that's good. Um, you're in your third term now. Right. What are your goals for either this term, next term? What do you, what do you want to accomplish yet? There's a lot I want to accomplish yet. Uh, one of the, the, the issues that I'm, I'm really focused on right now, uh, now that we have drug court up and running, is technology. Uh, law enforcement has uh, gone to a, a more or less paperless system. Uh, 
when they write up a report, they don't send us paper copies anymore of their reports. They, they send it to us uh, online uh, on, on secure links where we read, read uh, the data online. And then, uh, unfortunately, we have to print it off and create paper files. And on the other end, uh, court administration, they've now gone paperless with filing. So on the one end, law enforcement is paperless. On the other end, uh, court is paperless. But we're still using paper files. And to me, that's a frustration. It seems like we're that missing link. And that's something that I would like to try to fix in the next few years. I, I think we could do a better job with how that's handled. But it's, it's not an easy thing, because you have law enforcement system, which may not necessarily work with the court system or the defense attorney system, because we need to get uh, our disclosure to defense attorneys in a way that they will accept it, and in a form that they will accept it. And right now, uh, they're sort of demanding paper. And so it, it's, it's a matter of getting a system going where we can transfer the data from law enforcement to our electronic files to defense attorneys' electronic files to the court's electronic files. And so it sounds simple, but uh, it, it, I don't think it is. Well, I, I don't think so. security within all of those different areas and all of the data that's housed that, you know, some of it's public, but some of it's not. And I know Most that's of it's difficult. Not. Most of it's not. And security, all that data is paramount. Yeah, exactly. So I know that there's efforts. It's not only Morrison County. That's a statewide effort, I'd imagine, with the Attorneys Association to try to miss, to fix that mix, missing link, as you called it. Right. We're not the only ones mm -hmm. facing this struggle. Uh, other county attorneys' offices are, too. And so it, it is a statewide concern that we all have to address together, I, I think, to solve that problem. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you for being here today, and thank you for the work that you do for Morrison County, Brian. We appreciate it. Time's up already. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It flies when you're having fun. Uh, that went fast. <laughs> well, you're welcome. It was great being here. Well, good. And thank you for joining us for the Your County Government Show, which is aired on Fridays at 2 p.m. and Saturdays at 7 p.m. on Charter Channel 180.